Hello there, welcome to my um, instructional video on how to apply rosin to a wooden hurdy-gurdy wheel. Now then, what you're going to need is a block of Hindesign, well in this case, anyway, a block of rosin of any manufacturer. Mine is Hindesign, this is the block I've been using since about 1981. As you can see, it's been dropped, it's been lost, it's been kicked. And therefore, it's not as clean looking as it might be. But um, because I know how to much rosin to put on, I don't need to um, be able to see. I, all I need to ascertain how much rosin I'm putting on is to be able to hear. And that's the sound of the rosin bearing up against the wheel. You'll hear that in a minute. But so that you guys can see exactly how much I've put on, I put a white blob on this brand new block of what is double base rosin. I've never tried it before. And I'm going to try it now. And because um, some make it, some players use double base rosin. Heaven knows why, but anyway, they've recommended it to me. I'm going to give it a bash. Um, okay, so um, this is a wooden wheel. It's got a wooden band on it, on a block of probably um, plywood that's been faced with something. It's irrelevant. Um, it's uh, a wooden one. You can't use block on plastic ones. It will probably damage the plastic. And you can't use liquid rosin on wooden edged wheels either, I don't think, I'm sure you can't. And the reason would I would imagine would be that it's got solvent in it, either alcohol or rubbing alcohol or some kind of solvent that's um, the favour of the communities this particular week. But um, whatever solvent it is, it's bound to, I should imagine, cause the edge of the wheel, the grain of the wood to rise up. And that can't be good, can it? Because what we're after is a dead smooth flat um, virtually polished wheel edge. Um, anyway, so this is a, what we're after now is this corner edge, that bit where, where my fingernail is. Yeah, that's the bit they're gonna wear down, doesn't matter where, there's fine. We're gonna aim for that white blob so that in a minute when I offer it back up to the camera, I'll be able to see the facet and hopefully demonstrate more easily to you guys where that facet is worn. Um, but what we're going to be after is a facet that's about two millimetres wide, eight to ten millimetres long. Um, and that is how much I tend to use each time and when, when I do it, when I do use it. Depends on atmospheric conditions, of course, depends on the humidity and weather and the response I feel I'm getting from the instrument. I can sort of more or less tell when things are going a bit sort of um, squidgy sounding and not very precise or bright and therefore I d I've decided that's when you need to put a bit more rosin on. Um, if when you guys put your rosin on in the way that I've demonstrated that then that causes the whole instrument to go absolutely AP, sound horrible for the first time ever, your hurdy-gurdy turns into a great big pile of stinking poo. It isn't because of the rosin, it's because of something else. You put the rosin on, that has then caused the wheel to work actually correctly which will then determine, um, it will then demonstrate what else is wrong. It will cause, if it causes issues, then it's likely to be string pressure on the wheel, which we jack up in the old days. We used to jack up, so I still do, with bits of paper like that to raise the string up away from the wheel just a little bit so that the pressure is just about bang on in the way I like it, whatever that is. That's the way I'll, I'll be doing it. Um, seems a bit light at the moment. Oh, no, there we are, that's fine. Or the other reason why things may sound awful is because you put too much cotton wool on, not enough cotton wool on, or it may be some inherent construction issue with the hurdy-gurdy. There's a lot of that about at the moment. Um, the wheel, the strings should be being played by the wheel evenly across the whole range. So uh, the answer to that would be bits of paper this end to balance up the string, or you may need to have nut issues at the other end. So that may need to go down or up or be looked at by a maker, whatever. This is a rosin video. Okay, so we'll be turning the handle nice and fast. Three or four turns a second, depending on speed, not very slowly like that, because that may end up causing the rosin to come off in a non-even way. We want plenty of speed, plenty of friction. Before you do that, you may care to take the old rosin off. Mind you, it's probably worn itself off by now, this being the point. 
But um, say you get a blob of an accidental blob of sweat on your wheel or whatever, you want to want to start with a nice clean wheel. Way to do that is get a nice clean bit of oh dear, bit of Hindesign rosin backing pad, or a bit of t shirt, anything really, bit of cotton cloth. Hold it against the wheel, turn nice and fast. Now underneath your fingers, you want to feel your finger warm up. That's called friction. Yeah, you want friction because what you're trying to do is warm up that old rosin, blend all the accidents and all the issues that have happened to the wheel, all into one nice, smooth, continuous, fixed, beautiful wheel edge. Forwards and backwards, get some heat going into it. Blend out all of the funny little blobs that have, um, may have happened to it. Right, okay, let's get to our nice clean block. We'll aim for that white dot on the block there. That one there, get ya. We'll start from one edge, we're gonna go all the way across. We don't just plonk it in the middle and hope for the best. We're gonna start methodically from one edge and move at a constant speed all the way to the other edge or vice versa. Doesn't matter which. What you don't want to do is do use the side of the side wall because we don't know if that side wall is absolutely flat or not. And we don't want to use the top because I can tell you that top isn't flat. There it is, you can see it isn't. So you'll only be picking up rosin from that bit and that bit. You won't have put the rosin in the middle. The only way to, to um, guarantee that you've got rosin all the way across the wheel is to use the edge and pull it across as you go. Right, if you've got your ears on, you need to listen out for this because this is the sound of doing this is everything. Start from one edge and start moving across in a smooth way. Job done. That's literally totally it. Now then, where's this facet? Well, there's one there. See that fella? Ignore the white blob now, because I've managed to forget and put it in the wrong place. Actually, I did do one earlier, which is um, just like any good blue pizza film. There's one I did earlier. Mm, do you know what? It's going to be a bit hard to find, isn't it? I suspected. Anyway, so there's our, where's our other facet? Oh, man. Oh, there's one. Hee <laughs> hee. There's the blighter. What's that then? Let's have a look. It's about nine millimetres long. It's about two millimetres wide. It's perfect. That is totally what you want. Good luck.